Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're going to be looking at the Arrow List Infographic, as you saw in the following preview in the previous preview. I want to send out apologies for the two-week absence. Um, I apologize, but it's the type of thing that will happen, you know, when clients get heavy and I have to focus my attention on them. And this week was particularly draining, so I couldn't get any content out the previous two weeks but I'm here now and um, I'm going to kick the new time with a tutorial also you know happy Easter holiday to those who are in the Easter holiday you know wishing you a prosperous and family filled and fun time Easter okay let's get straight into it we have the dimensions as usual which is 1700 by 1700 I have given this a gradient using two colors below me and I put them in black because they're very close to white and they're off whites one's, one's more of a yellow off white the other's ochre the ochre's at the top the yellow's at the bottom and I have an arrow here and you don't need this arrow but this is just basically for my reference we're not gonna you're not gonna need it so touch just for me to remember okay then so let's get straight into it so I'm gonna firstly create a rectangle and I'm gonna use this arrow for reference get the length of it I think this is about okay so with the rectangle on now I'm going to just put that right here I think it is okay Lift up a little higher. Right. Let's give it a different color. But I'll give it a pink. I'm gonna duplicate this three times. If I remember correctly. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna give the top one an orange. And then I'm going to hold shift while I have the S selected with the handles here. And I'm going to squash it in. You can squash it a bit more. And then I'm going to push it in from here, giving me this type of box. Mm -hmm. That's going to rotate it actually, so that it comes about here. Yeah, and that's the right way. All right. Then. Next, I'm going to hold Shift and select the pink box underneath it, and I'm going to hit Control Shift and minus sign. Which is the same thing as difference, and we're going to a second we're going to path difference. <coughs> then I right, select the different colors so that we can see what's happening, and we're going to go into our filler stroke dialog box. You can right click and go to fill and stroke. You can hit Control Shift and F, or you can find it in your object tab. That is object fill and stroke. <laughs> Okay, and then we're gonna blur this. I'm gonna give this a blur of 9.2. And this is variable, you can test out which blur works for you, but 9.2 seemed to work out for me. Good. Then I'm gonna hold D and I'm gonna select this, select the canvas about in the middle. I'm gonna carry it down the HSL, that's the hue, saturation, and lightness. Carry it down until I get a darkish color that's to reduce the saturation a bit okay and I'm going to extend this out a little bit too good now this is where things get interesting we're going to use a clipping mask and a clipping mask in Inkscape is basically a mask that hides an object based on the second object that you place over it and it is key that it is over the object that you wish to contain within the mask if it's under you'll get different results so you have to make sure that this is over so because we want to clip and hide this blur we're going to make sure that whatever we're hiding it with is on top so we're going to right click this and go to set 
clip and when we set clip we notice that we get our blur is looking okay so we can bring down the purple bring down the lightness a bit right and we can even toggle the blur as we want now we notice that as we blur it in and out we see that the blur doesn't come out of the box area for which was clipped and this is extremely useful when you don't want your blur to go out of bounds or you want your blur to fit in a contained space great illustration also when you're adding extra blurs to things and for a long time in Inkscape this was the go-to solution in place of gradient meshes, the gradient mesh feature that was found in Illustrator. Because you could click the mask, you could control the blur radius and you could create the effect of gradients using different click marks. But even though we have the gradient mesh feature now, in the pipeline it's still a very very useful effect so what i'm going to do next now is that just to be accurate <coughs> and make sure my snapping tool is turned on and i'm going to make sure snapping bounding box is turned on and then go to snap bounding box corners and you will see it will snap to the corner i'm going to duplicate this invert it snap it to the corner great and i'm going to duplicate this invert it and snap it to the last corners here and it looks really good <coughs> okay so now we're going to use our arrow brought this here for this reference i'm just going to zoom into it i'm going to create it just tracing it out You notice the arrows have circular edges and we're going to create those also first let's get the rough arrow out there okay so if i just make sure it's come out okay that's all right so i'm going to get rid of this now now it's key for this to work that the arrow looks like this as this straight edge here because we're going to make it seem that the arrows are coming out of the boxes and you notice that the inset blur gives it or the blur gives it a sort of inset into the actual background you know because we use a darker unsaturated color it looks like it's been cut into the background and that's also a useful effect too so we have an arrow i'm just going to give this a color i'm just going to give this a color of orange and i'm going to remove the stroke now there are simpler ways to do this i imagine but i'm just going to go through this i think often enough we we don't go through the node practice so what i do in a situation like this is that i tend to create middle nodes and that do that by selecting these two end nodes and selecting this button here insert new nodes into selected segments Good. and i try to bring it as closer to the edge as possible about somewhere here where I want the circle to stop right. then I can press N I press delete on the end node let's get rid of the snapping and then bring it down until I get the curve I want you have to try and make the handles stretch along the same line as the arrow that will give you a nice rounded corner. I'm going to do the same here. Right. We're going to go into insert new nodes into selected segments. Let's carry this node down here. Do the same for this one. Into selected segments. Carry it down here. I get it as straight as possible delete this node carry the handles so that it's perpendicular as best as you can zoom in so that we can get it 
All right, great. So last thing I'm gonna do now is add it for this end. Put node in the middle. And put them in the middle. Drag them down. About here. Drag them down about here. Okay. I hold shift while I'm dragging if they're on a straight line, be it vertical or horizontal. You know, then you can just pull the node down without altering the shape. However, if it's on the diagonal and the diagonal is not one of the set 30 degrees or 45 degree angle, you're gonna have to play about with it a little bit till you get your desired result. Okay. So we've got our nicely rounded arrow. And we're going to start to use this arrow now. Good. So I'm just needing to check out where exactly I put this. Flip that. Okay. So this is how they're going to come out. Something like this. I remember correctly if I remember correctly let me go and just quick a quick check oh no they were coming from the bottom all right yeah, these little details sometimes I have to open up a pre one to check okay so they were coming from the bottom yeah and actually a bit more in the middle I wonder if I can adjust that quickly can I adjust that quickly? No, I don't think I can adjust that so quickly. That's okay. I made the boxes slightly bigger than I wanted to, but that's all right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, duplicate this. I'm going to flip it. And basically these arrows are gonna be moving pointing in directions in a clockwise direction set. In fact, let me turn the snap tool and that will give the bounding boxes option up so that I don't have to be struggling with this thing. Okay, next I'm gonna give this one a the pink or the fuchsia. And then I'm gonna flip this one a bit can get it to operate good and lastly I'm going to flip this to the side and I think this is this up yeah I'll just check to see that's it that's it good great stuff there's no icon in this tutorial by the way so you only get a font okay let's create it i think this was blue and this is brown oh brown blue okay so this is pink this is brown and the top was blue okay good all right then so we have it here and it's looking okay so next now we have our shadows we're going to add this 3D effect to the arrows. So that I'm gonna do for each one. Duplicate, I'm gonna get my Bezier tool with B or I can select Bezier down here. And I'm going to draw a line through the middle as best I can of the arrow. You have to make sure you duplicate the arrow also, then draw the line, so I have two arrows here. And I'm going to select this and the arrow I'm going to use my boolean modes and go to path intersection or control shift or control and shift and star which is over the 8 and you can't see anything because I have not put on put in a different color so I'm going to go to my Fill and stroke box, which is still open, in hue, saturation, and lightness, and carry down the darkness. And already we get the effect. Really nice, huh? What we're going to add to it? 
and we're gonna draw a line comes here and we're gonna just basically use our Bezier tool to, to follow the contours of the arrow as best you can Good, then we're gonna go to the full arrow, duplicate, select the arrow that we just created, shape that we just created, and we're going to use the intersect again, and that will give us a stroke. Then we're going to select this blue, go to view saturation and lightness, increase the lightness, let's get rid of the stroke so we can see, and that gives us a nice sort of bevel effect. Good. Now we're not going to create these shapes again, but we can just duplicate them and carry them over. Good. And then we're going to move them. Let's take our snap. Do this for the brown. Hold Alt while moving it around. Control while I'm rotating it, zoom in to get the best results. Now I'm doing this fast, but you can always take your time and do this and get wonderful results. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this, carry it down, completely flip it around, Just zoom in so you can get this in there clear. Hold Alt while pressing the directional buttons. Moves the object in small increments. Use the dropper tool to select the color. Go to hue saturation, make it slightly darker. And this can come up a bit more. Good. Carry down the light bevel. Hold Control while rotating. Move the safe also. And carry it down. See that it's down there as best it can. Good. Select this. Make it lighter. And last but not least, the orange. Duplicate this. Carry it down. And uh, we're going to carry it across. Select the orange, bring the lightness slider down, duplicate this, bring the arrow down, is looking okay. I'm going to increase the blur for these things slightly. Yeah, increase them a bit more and decrease the opacity. Good. Okay, so next we're going to add our text and I use a total of three texts in this. And the first one is Bree Sands. I'm going to type in arrow. Okay, hopefully we'll change the kerning on this again. So let's see, let's see the arrow is in scape. Okay, and I'm gonna type in Bree. A beautiful slab serif font. Arrow. Now 
just gonna import the I'm gonna import the other yeah, can you use this blur still in another image? Mm -hmm. I'm going to import the other let's go to burn. Import the other text from here. Okay, so the headline text is three, the number text is chunk five, and the small text is open sans. I'll leave a link to all three in the description. Here is the tutorial. I hope you learned something. For those working for work, work waiting for the color theory tutorial, I did a research on YouTube and found there are so many color theory tutorials. You know, and um, I have a tendency to not like my content to be the same as the rest. You know, I try to add a little spice to it. So I'm trying to get an animation in there like what was done for the vector versus raster graphics so as though that means a more interesting watch that means longer periods for that to come out so I'm sorry for those persons but you know it, it has to when it comes out it'll be good you know so here it is i hope you like i said i hope you learned something you know don't be afraid to ask me any questions if you have any Next week we move on to another tutorial. Look after yourselves until then. Get up and design a new dawn. Later.